Hey everyone, today is Monday, 7.45, uh, 42 p.m. The market has closed. Let's take a look at the market. Today is just another explosive day, right? Um, especially the leading stocks in this rally has, has gone, you know, vertical, right? So let's take a look at all the e-commerce stocks, uh, you know, the Tesla, the electric vehicles. They have gone absolutely ballistic today. And they just continue this uh, unstoppable rise. Let's take a look. So Tesla today uh, gapped up again. Um, right now we're closing into 1,271. So that is quite amazing. This is a, has been an amazing run. Uh, let's take a look at all the other one. Unfortunately, I saw my Tesla is about uh, you know 797 ish right here, and I never bought it back. Uh, that's just unfortunate. That's okay, right? You missed it. At least I caught this particular rally. I was buying at this point, at 200, uh, 180. My lowest entry was actually literally at bottom 183. And uh, that was a great run. And it came down to here. I I mean, in hindsight, obviously, I should have just uh, start, start buying this again. But I did not. Unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, that did not happen. That's unfortunate. That just... Uh, my mistake in, in this particular trade. Anyway, um, Tesla, let's take a look at all the other ones, the S&P, um, what else? NEO, NEO, right? NEO has, oh man, NEO, I bought uh, my NEO at uh, around uh, this the, right here, then it, it dropped down to one, I added more, I uh, added more here, then I sold it around, around this level, I remember, back in January last year. And uh, now it's like freaking 11. So again, same story. I did not buy back here, which I should. And um, well, hindsight is 2020, right? Just shows you it's very difficult uh, to trade. You don't really know what the market's going to happen, especially uh, during the coronavirus. I didn't really think the electric vehicles would just go up that much because usually during a a recession where the people have to cut back in their spending automotive automotive were usually the first thing they cut back right and but you know because uh, quantitative easing and all that stuff doesn't necessarily mean they the people's cut back in spending could affect these stock prices I mean these stock prices obviously they are I think they are deviated from their fundamental value by a huge margin uh, they are in the bubble level territory but i the, the reason they're up is because the quantitative easing lots of money low interest rate people can borrow money all these hedge funds they have a 30 times leverage they have a, lots of liquidities and they can they just go after these really uh, innovative companies right and these innovative companies valuation just gonna go extreme and that's the same as you know the 2000 the dot combo it's the same fundamental so right now by looking at the monetary kind of aspect of the economy this move is quite expected although i i would i would i did not expect this to to come back that quickly i, I did not expect this to go vertical that quickly at least in the in the electric vehicle sector i thought we might have a another uh you know longer consolidation than and stuff like that or i was expecting actually just came back have a double dip and then come come back up, up, up back come back up again, and that never happened. That never happened. That's just unfortunate. I, I missed these two when they were at the, a very low level again. Marshall was absolutely a great opportunity to accumulate. Instead, I bought a bunch of S and P five hundred, you know, ES options. It is done quite okay, but nothing compared to these kind of moves. And uh, plus, you know, the options are quite quite uh, volatile. So by holding these stocks, uh, my volatility would actually be less than me holding options, which is very ironic when, you know, uh, these stocks are pretty speculative. Their volatility historically qu are actually quite high. And uh, but uh, in this one, the volatility you can see here, it was actually there weren't there. There wasn't a lot of a correction along the way. Right. It just went straight up. <laughs> uh, that's just yeah. Let's take all the other ones, uh, the PDD, I, I, the Billy Billy, all these ones are, 
uh, you know, those new star companies. Let me see. PLE, PLE. They have gone up quite quite a lot. Okay, and uh, what I noticed is that uh, today there is something that's really interesting that's going on. It's a VIX. So the VIX right now has a positive correlation to the market. So whenever the VIX is going uh, kind of positive in terms of correlation, that usually means uh, that usually means um, they are kind of smart money. They're buying the options for uh, buying put options as a hedge, causing the IV of the option to be increasing despite the market is increasing because the IV of the option uh, decreases. Usually decreases when the market is rising or rising moder moderately. But today the the, the volatility index actually. Uh, is different. You know the IV. IV means implied volatility. Implied volatility in an option price um, is their expectation of a real volatility or, or or realized volatility. So when the market price uh, has gone, theoretically speaking, if the price usually the market takes the elevator down, right? So when the market is uh, is going down, usually it goes down very quickly. Right. That's why. You hear more of a stock market crash than a stock market melt up, although the melt up does happen. So when the stock market crashes, the volatility just increases because the price moves significantly within a certain period of time, within a day, right? The daily, for example, back in March, we have these kind of circuit breakers being being broken because the market was down like you know seven percent, ten percent, almost every day, and that's when the volatility goes extreme. And uh, so when the market is going up, usually it goes up quite slowly or not as crazy as when it's going down. So you can see that today the market is actually pretty flat. It just, uh, you know, all this, this, these kind of moves are much, much modest than, you know, these kind of moves. So what's, what's going to happen is that usually the VIX uh, goes down when the market goes up. Is an inverse relationship. But in some scenarios, in some scenarios, the volatility index... Um, actually has a positive correlation to the market and that happens about 20% of the time in the entire market. Most cases it's actually uh, just benign. It doesn't mean anything. It's random. Um, something you know in the option structure uh, that that changes and uh, then then the the IV somehow becomes positively correlated to, to the market when the market is going up. Or the RV has reached, or the implied volatility has reached a very low level, and the market suddenly went up a little bit. But the volatility right now starts increase, despite the market start, uh, the market price is going up because you know previously the the price is flat. So if the price is flat, and all of a sudden the price went up, the volatility, the IV could go up as well, right? Because the volatility in the market actually goes up. Volatility is a bi-directional indicator. It's a bi-directional measure measure so the market uh, so I could but today today what I noticed is that today the market is really calm right the general index is really calm you can see that it does nothing today and it did nothing and uh, the and uh, we had a gap up right from last week and what happens if you look at the VIX the VIX didn't gap down the VIX gap down a little bit but came back up uh, along with the market that just shows me that uh, there are some smart money. They are buying some protections in the option market, causing the IV to be maintained at this current level when it should when it shouldn't be. This just tells me that we might have a correction that's coming up in a matter of days. Okay, this is a bold statement, but. I actually think that we have a correction coming up in a matter of days. The market might turn in a, in a matter of days, just based on the market behavior. So let's take a look at all the other markets, right? The, the Shanghai, if you look at the Shanghai market, it's just insane now. It just gaps up and just going vertical, going vertical. And and uh, if you look at the, uh, right now, it's, it looks like this, right? 
uh, back in January or February 2019, if you look Hong Kong market, Hong Kong market, hey, you guys think a lot of people think that yeah, you know uh, China have a new law for the Hong Kong and uh, shouldn't wouldn't that erode democracy? Oh, it turns out you know the capitals actually loves it, right? Because that new law brings back stability. When you have stability, that's where the money follows. Money wants safety. Okay, money doesn't want riots. Money doesn't want protests. Money, capital wants safety, and if you can bring stability back, despite you know, it's controversial. You have some sort of law that potentially erodes people's freedom in Hong Kong, but it doesn't matter. The capitals love it. They they the stability is back in Hong Kong. Then the market just went straight up, right? Just vertical. I have some Hong Kong stock as well. I have this education company that called the Maple Leaf, uh, Maple Leaf Education, which they they do a lot of uh, um, high school K twelve education that's English uh, oriented. So that um, is a private school basically, and um, um, so people who. Uh, who, people who attend this school obviously they're, they're rich, and uh, they um, this school has is being recognized internationally by, by being recognized by international universities. So the the kids who went to this private school, for example, the school uh, they have branches in uh, Beijing, Shanghai, all these um, you know well-off places, uh, developed areas in China, and uh, if you send your uh, kids to this school, they are eligible to attend a foreign university. Basically, their grades are being recognized by a foreign university's admission office. So this is a very good, uh, uh, it's a very good education company, and uh, it was growing very, very quickly. I mean, the stock was performing extremely well between 2015 to 2018, and then it topped, and now it's just going straight down. I bought a little bit here at the two dollars ish, two dollar forty ish, and. Uh, it went back up in January. Now it crashed, but now I'm profitable again, <laughs> and which is quite amazing. Um, the market just shoots straight up. I think this could go even higher. We'll see. We'll see how how the market's gonna go. How far it's gonna go. But uh, judging from the other uh, the other things, uh, especially the VIX, that worries me. Uh, there are some smart money buying protections right now, so they're expecting a, a correction. And uh, especially for some of the other stocks, like Zoom, uh, the Billy Billy I showed you, they are already start correcting. You see that? Uh, one of my favorite stock I bought uh, a while ago was which is C. You can see that this stock is also correcting. So some of the stocks actually are correcting now. They are going ahead. They opened up higher today, and they are correcting. They actually went down throughout the day, and that is a sign of uh, potential weakness. And although I'm not shorting the market, I'm not gonna put my own opinion in front of the market. I'm not going to act based on my opinion um, until I see some evidence or further weakness in the market, but these are the signs that worries me, that we could potentially see a correction in a matter of days, in a matter of days. So I haven't been bearish about the market, I haven't been, you know, I've been telling you, you know, I, I think the market is going to continue to go up, go up, make a new high for the last couple of videos, but after I've seen, um, but a lot of these stocks, especially speculative ones, are going completely vertical, that just gives me a warning sign. So right now, uh, I think the first time since, since uh, you know, since March, since March twelfth, March twelfth, I was really bearish. The first time since March twelfth, I'm, I'm getting very cautious about the market, right? Sorry, March fourth, uh, even earlier. I, I mean, obviously, this thing went down. Uh, I did not really expect this top uh, previously in February. So when the market went down to here. I'm becoming cautious, but now the market went all the way here now, and uh, a lot of the stocks are actually making way, uh, way higher than they were before, at the February points, obviously, and now I'm just getting even more worried. Um, I'm, I'm first time for some reason I, I'm just, 
just based on my experience of uh, investing in the last, uh, you know, 12 years, uh, there's a f actually not 12 years, probably more than that, 13 years. So 12 years of trading real money, um, 13 to 14 years of trading a simulated account. But anyway, so I, I, I am more cautious um, than before. I'm way more, I'm extremely cautious right now. So let's take a look at the uh, S&P 500 E-mini right now. So we, we passed this particular level, we consolidated through the day and it seems that after our, the, the in, uh, they're trying to bring the index up a little bit more. You can see the futures up again. So I want to see how this is going to play out. My, my, I don't think, I think right now this thing is a fake out. It's not an actual real breakout. We might, we might see the market turn anytime, turn anytime. And uh, in my last video, I've been talking about this, that, uh, you know, if you compare this with the 2018, right here, it's likely that we could be at this particular point. <clears throat> so I, you, you, you have to take this kind of scenario into account, right? It broke out this range, had a fake out and just crashing down. So I am not, I'm not gonna be, you know, super excited about this. I'm not ready right now, I'm not currently super excited about, you know, just this thing kind of try to, is, is trying to move out of the level a little bit, trying to attract a lot of buyers. And uh, it might open a bit higher tomorrow to attract more buyers. And that's usually how the top how the interim top is formed, right? Before the market turns drastically because the people who couldn't hold down to their urges to buy, they're FOMOing, their fear of missing out. That's, these are the locations that they're gonna buy. These are the price level, these, these weak hands are gonna buy. Um, they, they think that the market's gonna go up forever. And uh, that's usually when the market turns all of a sudden. Okay, so, Definitely do not chase. Definitely do not chase. It's just a horrible idea. Let's take a look at all the other stuff. Uh, the cryptocurrency market. Cryptocurrency market has been absolutely underperforming. <laughs> has been absolutely underperforming since uh, for the last, you know, um, for the last uh, two months. <laughs> it's just horrible. And sometimes I wish there is a uniformed stock and crypto account which I can take advantage of, right? So my group brokerage allows me to buy cryptocurrency that is a certain product listed on a certain exchange. For example, the GBTC, the, the trust, and also this Ether and Bitcoin Tracker 1, which is which are based in uh, the Euro. It's based on, uh, it's, it's being traded on the Swedish stock exchange. And these products are not ideal for real cryptocurrency traders, for serious, for serious cryptocurrency traders like me. The reason is they do not trade 24-7, right? So right now the market is closed. If I want to buy or sell right now, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to buy and sell, right? And, uh, and also um, they, they have a liquidity issues as well, right? They also have a premium on their products. So they're, they're just tracking the cryptocurrency and also they have a risk of default, right? If, uh, for example, uh, if, you know, that company went under or someone stole their private key, they lost all their money in their wallet, then the fund goes to zero, right? So potentially I could lose all my money by investing in these kind of vehicles. and. And because my, some of my money is trapped in cryptocurrency and uh, it underperforms for the last two months, I basically made nothing from that money, right? And that's just not good. And I wish I could have just taken it out and put in the stock market. The reason I did not take it out, even I could have, is because transferring the money from my cryptocurrency account, you know, turn the cryptocurrency into the fiat, then, then transfer the fiat into the stock account, just take like so many steps and so many potential 
conversion cost and all that stuff, it's just not worth the hassle. And so my cryptocurrency account and the stock account are completely separate and sometimes the cryptocurrency underperforms. My capital are just not being put to work and make me money. And just that's just not ideal scenario and that's just something I have to live with. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin right now. Um, is uh, you can see this trend line here. Um, I I have a trend line, but but the thing is, the Bitcoin hasn't been able to break this particular barrier, right? And uh, this barrier has been going uh, going uh, around for a while, and now we're trying to potentially reach that point again. It seems that the market is pretty weak again, and I think that's probably going to fail, and Bitcoin could just continue to consolidate downwards and again I'm very bullish on Bitcoin I think it's going to consolidate downwards and eventually it's going to break out <coughs> that's probably uh, very likely to happen um, sim similarly Ethereum I think is going to um, I think this particular thing is going to fail um, in my opinion I think it's already got rejected a little bit when it reached 243 and it's probably going to consolidate and come down again and uh, and uh, consolidate and then come up, right? That's that's what I expect. I think that's that would be a very good um, way for this to accumulate more energy than goes up. Because right now the energy in this market is just very, very low. And, compared, and also the overall stock market, as I mentioned, there are some potential danger in the stock market. Right now, this particular move is kind of attracting the FOMO buyers, the fear of missing out buyers, and uh, uh, it's very dangerous to chase right now. Although it looks like it, you know it's gonna go up forever, but you can see there's these kind of magnitudes. The it the 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 whales, the the market maker likes to put this particular price at the high of the day, make you feel that you have to chase, right? Because uh, a lot, most of the participants are visual animals. A lot of retail traders and visual animals, when they see something that just pushing to the new high, they think this thing could go up forever. But that's a trick that they do. They like to put uh, the price at the high point. They like to squeeze upwards like that. Then rug pull. It's very common. Uh, you can see that here. They squeeze upwards, rug pull, squeeze upwards, squeeze upwards, rug pull. Right? It's fairly common they do these kind of stuff. Um, <coughs> okay, and I think that's it. That's all I want to talk about. Be very cautious in the market right now. If you have shares in these very good companies, uh, I mean, not very good companies, these euphoric companies, great for you and I think it's time to take some profit off the table it's the first time I've been saying for you know last two months that you should thinking about taking profit and uh, I think right now is a good time to think about that your your some some your exit strategy I would say I think the bull market is not over uh, after this correction I think we my, my real thing is that you know once we correct to to a certain level, maybe here, or maybe even down here, uh, the market's gonna rebound and uh, make a new high. But I think right now, it, it just doesn't have enough energy to make that new high. Okay, so that's everything, and thanks for watching. See you next time.